just gonna get on in here. Hello, so I'm currently in the middle of 27 series, which is insane. I have a really bad habit of starting a series and then getting distracted with like other books and never going back and finishing the series that I start. But I really wanna make an effort to go back and finish every single series I'm in the middle of. Now, seven of those series, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna abandon. I'm not like super, super interested in continuing them. And then three series, I'm waiting on the next book in the series to come out. So that leaves us with 17 series that I want to finish and can actually finish. Most of them are above me, a few are not because I'm either letting people borrow them or I originally got them from the library. Okay, let's go get somewhere comfier and try and finish a series because the floor is, is not very comfortable. So the last series that I started is the Folk of Air series, AKA the Cruel Prince series. And I feel like it's always better when I start a series and read it completely through without stopping. I did that with the Akatar series and I just enjoy it so much more because then I feel like I'm in it. Because this is the last series I started, I think it makes sense to focus on finishing this one first. And I already have the sequel of The Wicked King. I'm on page 220. So we are finishing the Folk of Air series first. And if you're not familiar with the series, it's really good, it's fantasy. It has a romance subplot, but it pretty much follows Jude and she's a mortal living in a fairy world. To win a place in the court, Jude must defy Prince Cardan, the youngest and wickedest son of the High King. And we've also got an enemies to lovers plot with her in Prince Cardan. And what I really love about this enemies to lovers plot is most enemies to lovers, like they hate each other, you know, like they don't like each other, but like really they find each other attractive or just like kind of get on each other's nerves a little bit. But in this series, they're like actually enemies. Like they hate each other so it is like a true enemies to lovers transformation and i'm like so intrigued by how we're gonna actually transform into the lovers aspect i also love the politics and the world all right let's get started reading the wicked king i am on page 267 and the romance i am so happy about what just happened but also like every time we get like we move an inch in the romance something happens that gets in its way which also just happened like holly black has a way of like just giving you a sprinkle a little taste to where you're so hooked but it's like agonizing how much you want more Hello, it is Future Ali. I just want to tell you guys really quick about my skincare routine. All of the products that I use are from Curology, who is also the sponsor of today's video. So typically if I was already wearing makeup, I would start with their makeup remover, which literally removes my makeup so fast. Next up is their gentle cleanser to clean my face and remove dirt. The absolute coolest thing about Curology is that they create a custom formula made for you. Now I have tried a lot of skincare brands and I have never ever had one create a custom formula made for me. When I signed up on the website, I got to pick areas of my skin that I wanted to improve. Like for example, I have pretty dry skin, so that was one of the main things I wanted to target. I feel so much more confident knowing that my skin's needs are actually gonna get addressed because I know the custom formula was made for me. Plus, once I signed up, I got a message from my dermatologist provider explaining my custom formula and my treatment plan, which I really appreciate. So I fully understood everything and how it was going to target my skin. I also love that the custom formula says, makes just for you because your skin isn't like anyone else's. Next up, I'm applying their moisturizer to really hydrate my skin. And the skincare provider does have full decision-making power over the prescribed product, which I honestly love because I trust them to know what my skin needs. And lastly, I'm finishing off with their lip balm. I have like chronically chapped lips, and because of that, I have tried like one billion chapsticks in my life, and I've just never found one that I really loved until Curology. So start your Curology journey today using my link, which is on the screen and linked in the description. I finished the book and oh my gosh, I am unwell. It ended, it ended like so surprising. Like so, so, so surprising. And I don't know what to think of the ending of a certain character. I am like kind of speechless. I think I'm gonna say 4.5 stars for this one, but the ending was so good So like if the next book is as good as this ending then I feel like the next book could be five stars I don't know what to do because I put the next book the queen of nothing on hold at my library And I'm the next one to get the book on the wait list, but it's not ready yet Hello, it is the same day just nighttime. I really can't focus on anything Like I just keep thinking about how I want to be like back in that world. So I got the ebook 
and I'm already on page 46 on my iPad and something crazy already happened. One of the characters revealed something. There's a lot of morally great actions, a lot of morally great characters, and I feel like morally great characters are so fun. Like I love constantly being in a state of like, do I like this person or hate them? And for me, my most love-hate character is Taryn, Jude's sister. It's midnight and I'm on page 164 and I'm so sleepy, but I want to keep reading. So I don't know if I should keep reading or not. I think I'm gonna read till like 1 a.m. and then probably go to bed. I haven't read a book in a while that like makes me want to like stay up and try and finish it. Like makes me want to read it in one day. Like I am so obsessed with this series and this third book especially. Like this third book is just moving so fast. Every chapter I'm like, okay, I'm gonna stop at the end of this chapter. And then I get to the end and I'm like, okay, I'll just read a little more. And then that goes on repeat forever and ever. I've heard that some people have like mixed feelings and there's like mixed reviews about the first book, The Cruel Prince. Some people say that it's like boring and slow, which I really liked The Cruel Prince. I didn't have any mixed feelings about it. But if you do start this series and aren't loving the first book, please stick with it because book two is even better and book three is like, so good it's so good hello it is 1 10 a.m i've read to page 200 exactly and that is my cue to go to bed i'm so happy at what just happened but also like i said like there's still so much that needs to be resolved and i only have less than 100 pages left so i'm like how is everything gonna get resolved anyway i will see you guys in the morning and tell you more of my thoughts but i'm sleepy so good night it's a Keep on forgetting, times learn how to fly And before I know it, it passes my by oh. Good morning. I'm pretty sure that a rainstorm is coming because it is so dark outside. The weather says rain. But yeah, I'm excited if we get rain because that is the best reading weather. I finished the queen of nothing and wow wow it was so good 100% five stars for the last book I honestly might give book two five stars as well I definitely like the last book so much that was my favorite one in the series by far it just moved so fast there were so many things I didn't see coming there were so many things I had no idea how the characters were gonna get out of the romance was so good the politics were crazy Jude I feel like just really really came into her own and she's just such like a cunning character but I appreciate that Holly Black like still includes that characters have flaws i feel like every single character was either morally gray or i loved but like definitely had flaws and i love and appreciate that and yeah this is my first time reading anything by holly black before and i would love to read more about her it's still crazy to me when i read fantasy that like that entire world that entire plot all those characters just come out of someone's brain like that's wild not that other genres aren't impressive but just that fantasy is like an entirely new world is crazy that someone invented that to me and I want to live in every single fantasy world that I've read and I will forever be sad that I can never live in these worlds okay on to series number two wow this feels good I've honestly been like stressed about like how many series I'm in the middle of so I'm so happy it feels so satisfying to like complete at least one on my list and speaking of satisfying things I can move the cruel prince the Folk of Air series, now to my bookshelf. I currently have my books organized to where I have a TBR cart with all the books that I haven't read, and then I have a bookshelf with all the books that I've completed. So it's like so satisfying to take a book off my TBR cart, read it, and then get to move it over to my finished reads on my bookshelf. Okay, what series do we wanna do next? Honestly, I just kinda wanna like quick knock out another series. So I think I'm gonna do the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. I feel like a lot of people don't know this or I just like haven't heard it talked about, but I have finished the main three books in the Good Girls Guide to Murder trilogy, but there is a prequel, wait, let me go get it, called Killjoy. It's a little novella, only 117 pages. And it is Pip from the A Good Girls Guide to Murder series going to a murder mystery dinner party. So I think this is supposed to show like how she got into like solving mysteries. And it says six suspects, three hours, one murder, which sounds really fun.
That cat just closed the door on himself. He does it all the time and then he gets so upset because he doesn't want to be trapped. Come on, little guy. Yeah, you're running out. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow to start Killjoy. So far I've read page 48 and I love how every chapter ends on like a mini cliffhanger. It's already like a short book that's easy to fly through, but especially that there's all these like mini cliffhangers, I'm like really flying through it because I just can't put it down at the end of each chapter. And so far, it's fun. I don't know if we're just solving a murder mystery or if something more spooky is gonna happen, like a real crime. But either way, I'm having a lot of fun trying to figure out who the murderer is at the murder mystery dinner party. Also, I have been annotating this book. I have two copies of this book and I thought it'd be fun at some point to do a giveaway, giving away annotated books to you guys since there's a few books that I have duplicates of. So yeah, I think I'm gonna do that when I reach 100K on YouTube. I just finished the book and I liked it. It was cute. I would give it three stars. Not because there was anything I disliked about it, just because it is like a super quick novella. It's also like has fun foreshadowing in it to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, like the trilogy. Like if you read this before the series, I feel like that'd be fun. Or if you've already read the series and then go back and read this, then you'll understand like all the little foreshadowing moments. I feel like it shows Pip's personality really well and like how her mind works and how she just gets so hooked on mysteries and is like a genius at solving them. So it was nice to be back in like the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder world and with all of the characters. I didn't realize how much I miss this world and these characters. Okay, here are the series I'm debating between starting next. Uh, it's such a tough decision. Part of me really wants to finish the Inheritance Game series because I just have the last book, The Final Gambit, left. So I would just read that book and then I would be complete of another series that I could check off. But I also really want to read a romance just because I've been reading a lot of fantasy and a lot of young adult books recently. So I kind of want to read an adult romance, I think. So I think I'm going to go with the Knockmount series. This is the first book in the series. And this is one of my favorite romances ever. It's my first Lucy score book, five stars for sure. Like one of my top three romances. If you take any romance recs from me, let it be that book. And I have the sequel, Things We Hide From The Light. And then I think there's also a third book coming out later this year. But yeah, I'm going to start Things We Hide From The Light. I am at my parents' house, which is why my background looks different, but it's a few days later, and so far I've read page 155, and I'm really liking the book so far. I love that the book so far has all the elements that I loved about things we never got over, like it's a small town, it has quirky side characters. The first book, Things We Never Got Over, followed Naomi and Knox for our main characters, and we're getting to see a lot of them in this book, which I love because I love them so much, but this book follows two different characters for our main character romance. It follows Lena and Nash, and I like that, like I said, this book has all my favorite elements from book one but then also has introduced its own new elements like Nash is dealing with some mental health issues. I love and appreciate that this book is covering that especially for a man to be dealing with like mental health issues and panic attacks. I feel like we don't really talk about that stuff much especially for men going through that. So yeah I'm really liking that. I am now on page 280. This book is definitely a slow burn especially considering the fact that it is 573 pages. That's crazy. That's so long. So far, I've had like mixed feelings on slow burns. Like they're either like huge hits or huge misses for me. Like some slow burns I love because it moves so slow. I'm just like craving the romance and for them to get together. And then other ones move too slow for me. And like we're already on page 280 and like they haven't even kissed or anything yet. So yeah, definitely slow burn. I'm liking it, but I'm not just like obsessed, like crazy head over heels for the romance. Good morning, I'm on page 337 and this book, something I love about it is that the trope is good boy, bad girl, which I love. I feel like that's so rare. Like normally it's bad boy, good girl. Like Lena is like so like badass, like independent. She's got kind of a dangerous job. She's just so cool and I love her. And then Nash is so sweet. He like cares about everybody in his community, in his little town so, so much. He is ready to put a ring on the next woman he falls for. Like he is just a sweetheart. They're such different characters, but it's so fun that they're so different to see a romance between them. I just got to page 394 and what just happened was so cute. I'm so happy we're finally like really getting into the romance finally on literally page 394. And I just love Lena and Nash's dynamic. They bicker a lot, like butt heads a lot, but like in a hot way, like they make bickering hot, you know?
I am on page 436. What I'm loving, it is spicy. Love me some spice. I really like that. One thing I'm not loving is there's a lot of side plot in this book, which is something I really liked about the first book in the series. And I do still like that about this book. Like it's nice to have stuff going on outside of just the romance, but it's like a lot of side plots. And I feel like it's moving a little bit slow. The side plot is a carryover side plot from the first book and it has to do with a criminal. So that's kind of exciting and cool and different to combine a criminal side plot with romance. But yeah, it just like needs to move a bit faster. I finished the book and I really liked it. I think Lucy Score is such a good writer. This is my third book that I've now read by her. And something she always has, which is great, is like I said, like great side characters and just like such fun lines. Like there are so many like funny moments, like not like ha ha ha, like full comedy, but lines where I'm just like, that was a cute line. You're like, oh, that was clever. That was fun. And all of her chapters have such fun names. Like this chapter is called, when did you stab him with a pitchfork? <laughs> like every time I finish a chapter, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna stop reading now. And then I read the chapter name and I'm like, okay, I have to see what that's about. But yeah, like I said, I don't know that this was like my favorite, favorite book I ever read by her. I did still really like it, but I did feel like it moved kind of slow at points. Like I feel like it could have been like a hundred pages shorter. So I think I'm gonna say four stars. I really debated between four and four and a half stars. I think I'm gonna go with four. But I would still really highly recommend this series and I'm so excited for the third book, which is gonna be a romance between Sloane and Lucian that is coming out later this year. Let me know if you guys like this video idea because I have like truly loved working towards finishing all my series and I would love to do a part two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight million parts until I finish all the series I'm in the middle of. All right, with that, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.